Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, entertainer here at IT Pro TV, joining you for a discussion on how to start your CISSP success journey, what it takes to become a CISSP, how you go through the process, and of course, what it takes to pass the exam and apply for the certification. Join me if you will. Let's get started. ISC Squared has done a great job laying out the four-step process that we need to go through. ISC Squared is the consortium behind the CISSP exam, and you ultimately go through them to apply for the certification, to take and, of course, pass the exam, and then to be granted your CISSP. Step one is ensuring whether or not the CISSP is right for you. Who earns the CISSP? There are a lot of different people that potentially are looking to become CISSPs. As we think about the skills, the prerequisites, and the career paths that many of us may already have under our belt, be pursuing and or be envisioning as we imagine what it's like to become a CISSP, many of those areas that we work in today, many of the areas you work in today, will certainly set you up to be successful, but there are some that are better than others. Let's take a look at what ISC Squared says may be helpful here. Ideal candidates come from a wide array of different areas, things like chief information security officers, chief information officers. So more senior C-level executives focused on information protection and security would certainly be likely candidates here. Directors of security, IT directors and or managers. So whether it's a CTO, CIO, perhaps a chief risk officer, a chief information security or chief security officer, any and all of those senior C-level roles, definitely candidates here. What about security systems engineers, security analysts, managers, auditors, architects and consultants, any and everybody that aside from having the word security as part of their job description, are focused on different aspects of information assurance, security, policy, governance, due diligence, due care, and risk management, any and all of those people that are at the tip of the spear and are executing and doing, as well as in the middle of the operational environment, overseeing and managing, are all gonna be good candidates to become CISSPs. So if any or all of these make sense for you in terms of roles you've been in, roles you are moving towards, or roles you envision being able to achieve over the arc of your career, the CISSP is definitely a certification that's gonna help you get there. It is globally recognized and is the gold standard for information security managers. And there's a reason that it is that successful and that well known, because these kinds of career paths are the kinds of career paths that are supported by this kind of a credential. All right, so we've talked a little bit about who is a good candidate to earn the CISSP. Let's move on and talk a little bit about what it takes to register and prepare for the exam. Step number two. When we think about registering and preparing for the exam, we want to focus on what you need to know to pass the CISSP and hopefully take and pass it on the first time. Take a look at what's called the CISSP CBK, the common body of knowledge, or the eight domains that make up the body of knowledge, the areas that you focus on that are part of the exam blueprint or the outline that you have to be aware of in order to take, study, and pass, ultimately, for the CISSP exam. I'm gonna show you all eight in just a moment, but keep in mind, when we think about what you need to know to pass the exam, Training is one key element of that, and IT Pro TV can certainly help you with that training if you're interested. I have two courses about CISSP in preparation for it at IT Pro TV. I have a full course that walks you through this entire eight domain body of knowledge end to end, as well as what we call an accelerated course. We assume a lot of prior knowledge for those of you in the industry already, maybe holding one of those careers that we just talked about a moment ago and looking just to fill out the gaps, and really brush up on those elements that you may not do every day. For instance, you may not be in software development security as a primary focus of your career, but you may certainly oversee a development team and you may need to brush up a little bit on that domain area to take and pass the exam. Well, rest assured, I've got you covered because both courses go over over these eight domains in depth. It's just a matter of how much additional information you may want. And you have options, and options are important. I want to be thinking about flashcards, as well as review questions to help you study and prepare for the question types you will see and the 150 potential questions you have to answer on the exam and answer correctly if you are doing this in English. If you're doing it in one of the other languages the exam is offered in, you may take the traditional exam format 
where it's paper-based and you have the ability to take it in up to a six-hour format. 250 questions, loads of fun. Let me tell you what. But if you are taking it in English, and you are taking what's called the CAT exam, which is the adaptive computer-based exam. It's 150 questions you have to answer uh, at approximately about 100 correct in order to take and pass the exam. So it, the experience will vary a little bit around the world depending on what you're doing, but regardless of how you take the exam, all eight domains are gonna be fair game and think of them all as being critical to your success. Domain one, security and risk management. Domain two, asset security. Domain three, security architecture and engineering. Domain four, communication and network security. Domain five, what we call identity and access management, IAM. Domain six, security assessment and testing. Domain seven, security operations. And of course, as I already mentioned, domain eight, the software development security domain, where we see and understand the SDLC, the software and or system development lifecycle, which is one of the key backbones and key elements of success on the CISSP exam, along with things like security and risk management, business continuity and disaster recovery, what we call BCDR, and any and all of these, along with all the other elements across the eight domains, are gonna be found in the exam blueprint, the exam outline, or what's called the CIB, the Candidate Information Bulletin. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to go through and download that in, again, one of several languages based on how the exam is offered. You can see right below here on the webpage that we're on, the links to download them in English, Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Korean, Spanish, as well as Brazilian Portuguese are all available to you. And these are all of the languages that the CISP exam is currently offered in globally. So definitely take advantage of that. Download the blueprint, go through the outline in depth and make sure you're aligned with all the different domains and all the subtopics you need to be aware of in order to take and pass the exam. And remember, you come hang out with me and I'll show you everything you need to know if you come over to IT Pro TV and check out one of my courses. All right, so that's step two, which is how do we register for and prepare for the exam? We talked about the prepare part. Let's talk about the register quickly, which is where do you go to take the exam? Now, depending on where you are in the world and what you're gonna do, you're gonna have to go through Pearson View, which is the global testing partner for ISC Squared. You'll register through the Pearson View website. You'll follow the instructions, the steps, and the options provided to you based on the geography you're in and the capabilities for test delivery that may exist in that area at that time. And then once you're done and registered, you get your exam date, you go off, you do your studying, you go take your exam, and you celebrate your success with getting certified. So let's move on to step number three. When we talk about getting certified, what we talk about is making sure that once you've taken and passed the exam, that you understand that that is just the beginning of the journey. That is not the end point. Taking and passing the exam simply invites you and gives you the capability to then present the necessary work experience and your CV, your resume, tell your story, along with your application for certification to ISC Squared. You actually must formally apply to be granted any of the ISC Square credentials. We're here to talk about CISSP, but any and all of them follow the same process. You take and pass the exam, you then show the necessary work experience, credentialing is checked, verified, and validated. And then, if everything is found to be in order, ISC Square will grant you the credential. You'll be invited then to pay your fees, the associated maintenance fees, the dues, if you will, uh, and to maintain that certification on an annual and on a every three year rolling basis with CPEs, continuing professional education credits. And you then maintain that for as long professionally as you would like to hold that credential. If for any reason you let it lapse, you can always come back and take the exam again but remember, you have to go through the whole process and start over, so keep that in mind. All right, so gaining the necessary work experience. For CISSP, it's really important. You'll see here that it allows, or we expect you to have, passing the exam, at least five years of cumulative paid work experience in two or more of the eight domains of the common body of knowledge, which we just talked about as the eight domain outline in step two. So, Across two or more domains, you have to have five years cumulative experience. That's important to note. As I said, you may not be a software developer focusing on security, but you probably have a network and communication security background. You may be a risk manager. So when you look across those eight domains, you should be able to find at least two of them and tell compelling stories about your experience. So keep that in mind. 
In addition, you can look up all of the CISSP experience requirements through the link right here. And if for any reason you don't meet the minimum requirements, you're at the three or four year mark in your career journey, you've taken the exam, you've passed it, but you're not quite there yet, you can attain what's known as the Associate of ISC Squared, which gives you an entry-level stepping stone to then gather that work experience and then be granted the full credential once you reach the five-year mark across those two or more domains. So keep that in mind. That may be an option for those of you that may not have been doing this particular area that you're focused in right now for as long, but still have the knowledge to take and pass the exam. You have to complete the endorsement process. You submit your certification passing score. You submit all that information along with your CV or your resume, depending on where you are and what you call it. And or you can get a CISSP in good standing, somebody who is a member of the ISC Square community already as a certified credential holder, someone such as myself, perhaps a professional or a colleague or a peer that you know at work. They can stand up for you and say, I've known you for this long. I will attest to the fact that you have these skills. I will endorse you. And you can have someone like me or any sitting CISSP endorse you if they know you and can speak to your skills and to your experience. So you have a couple of options here. Definitely want to follow through the web page, read up on the, the understanding of everything you need to know, read up on it to make sure you are going to go the appropriate path, the path of least resistance. There is the need to agree to and abide by and uphold the ISC Square Code of Ethics. The Code of Ethics is non-negotiable. Every sitting certified professional in the ISC Square community globally in our family all of us agree to and uphold the Code of Ethics every day. You will be no exception to that rule as you join our community, become a member of our family. Protecting society, the common good, necessary public trust and confidence, as well as infrastructure, acting honorably, honestly, justly, responsibly and legally, providing diligent and competent service to principals, as well as advancing and protecting the profession are all part of what we call the Code of Ethics Canons. You are responsible for knowing these, agreeing to them, signing your name to them as part of the application and certification process. And you want to make sure you are familiar with them. You're going to be asked about them on the exam. You pay your annual maintenance fees. Those are going to be the fees associated with maintaining your certification every year. You can follow the link there to understand what they are. The fees will vary based on whether you are fully certified or an associate. You can see there's a difference there. You can follow the links to learn more about the fees and CPE reporting the continuing professional education credits that you need to maintain your various certification or certifications as you are achieving them and ultimately maintaining them over their lifetime. And then finally, ISC Squared says step four, becoming an ISC Squared member. That is where you are granted your certification, joining the global community of cybersecurity leaders, people such as myself and the people that you already know that hold this and perhaps many other certifications from ISC Squared. And you become, as I said, part of our community, part of our family. And there are over 100,000 of us globally that are CISSP sitting in good standing. I've been one for a very, very long time. You may be new to this, but you will come to know many of the members of our community. We help each other. We focus on risk, mitigating it for the common good. And we try to advance the profession and clear a path for those coming up behind us so that we can add to our community and keep it strong over time. I look forward to having the opportunity to work with you if you're pursuing a CISSP, whether it's at IT Pro TV, working with me in one of my courses. Remember too, full and or accelerated, or you're studying on your own, looking to figure it out and make your own way. Whatever your CISSP success journey is, I'm gonna wish you good luck with it. Happy CISSPing, and until I see you on the other side of your certification, good luck, good studying, and work hard.